I'm getting ready to leave the MD-80, and there are a few things on this airplane uh, that I like that I'll miss when I go over and fly the uh, Boeing again. First, let's start with some of the quirky items that it's got. They put in a manual gear extension that is almost identical to the DC-3 regular gear extension. And you pull this lever up and drop the gear down if you had any kind of problems. They've got knobs that came out of the DC-3 as well. These are off of just, just about straight off of the throttle quadrant on a DC-3. The windows, as you can see here, look like they came out of the Apollo space program. They have a lot of uh, levers and uh, ball uh, links that hook up, come up in here with a track like this. And uh, it's amazing how much effort probably went into designing this, just this little window. And uh, if you put your hand up there, you know, invariably you'll get some grease. The fire handle is right here on the, on the panel. And if you pull that fire handle and you've got one of these pneumatic crossfeed valves open, which are down here, it's a, just a lever that's connected to some valves way in the back. You pull the handle, those crossfeed valves will close. And here's the other part. If you were flying along, you had your fire, your fire's all out, and you wanted to, for some reason, open that pneumatic, which is air, crossfeed valve, if you lifted this back up, it pushed the fire handle back in and interject fuel and hydraulics, electrics, that kind of stuff, back into the fire. There's a function on the airplane called PERF. When we're flying along level, if we push this button right here called PERF, what that does is it maintains the altitude uh, as best it can within plus or minus 100 feet at cruise with the autopilot. Instead of adding power and taking power off and adding power and taking power off, it uses just its natural ability to find the altitude to uh, control the airspeed. Well, the problem with that is you could be 100 feet low or 100 feet high, and it just it's a goofy system and nobody ever uses it. Another unique thing is this uh, outflow valve. As we fly along in the pressurization outflow valve, it's like a little door that opens and closes. As that door opens and closes, this little lever moves back and forth. And it's connected to cables, of course, to the back of the airplane and to that door. So we can actually see how the pressurization is doing. This is in manual mode with the switch flipped down. And there's the automatic mode. Well, one of the uh, fun things that it's got is a dial-a-flap. You can dial in whatever flap setting you want for takeoff, and uh, it'll set that uh, right there. When you're adjusting your seat, there's actually a sight gauge that you can look through and a little ball and a little uh, channel and you have to got, align the ball and the channel to see if you're exactly uh, spot on. And it makes it easy to get your seat adjusted and the height just right. Um, if you can you know, do that, of course. Just like any other airplane. But most planes don't have the sight gauge to this extent. Without a doubt, the most goofy thing on the airplane is uh, the compass. It's almost as if they built the airplane and at the very end they finished up and said oh, we forgot to put the compass in. So what they did is they put the compass behind the co-pilot's uh, seat and they gave us mirrors, one for the co-pilot, one for the captain, to angle just right so that the captain and co-pilot can check the, their headings down on their displays with the mirrors here which are pointing back behind the co-pilot's head. Really goofy system, but it works. And in fact, if you were to look at that compass directly, all the writing is backwards because it's gonna be read in a mirror. These, uh, this, these are the landing lights, two landing lights and a nose light. One of the cool things about the landing lights is you can extend just the light themselves without turning it on, and out at the wingtips, the lights come down, and then you can flip it to the third, second position, and that is uh, on, so it's off, extend and on. When you're flying and you're descend descending and trying to get down, if you put these lights on, it'll actually descend a little bit faster. You can get a couple hundred feet a minute uh, increased sink rate out of it because of uh, the drag. And you can feel them. When you're in the airplane and you're uh, on approach as a passenger, see if you can feel when the lights come on. One other feature about the landing lights, they've got glow-in-the-dark labels on here for some reason. So I guess if it was really dark, you could still see the the lights. There's a couple other knobs on the airplane that have uh, glow-in-the-dark uh, features on them. Those are just some of the quirky items, but there are so many things 
that I really like on the MD-80 uh, that the Boeing may or may not have. Uh, one example is the uh, map light on our map chart here. We can uh, control light directly on that. And when the yoke moves, it doesn't interfere with uh, what you're seeing down there. Now all the Airbus guys are going to tell me who needs the whole thing anyway. They got their table to come out, but yeah, this is kind of nice. Kind of old school. The glare shield on the top, when we bring in trays, we've got to set something somewhere. Uh, there's no liquids or anything on them. We'll put a tray up here uh, while we're juggling uh, people and uh, stuff in and out of the cockpit. And another place after the tray is after we're done with our meal, we uh, put it on the jump seat back here. We open up the jump seat, angle it out a bit, and it becomes a little table for us to put stuff onto. Uh, the airplane has a sunroof. This is a pro or a con. Um, most pilots, I think, uh, don't really like it. It gets pretty bright here and um, with the sun shining down on you. And you end up stuffing things up in there to, uh, uh, to block some of the sun on your head. I like the window shade. Uh, it folds down and it's able to move all the way across. In fact, all the way to the other pilot side. Probably one of the nicest features about the airplane is it's very quiet. We're up here so far away from the engines in the back that it's almost like flying a glider when you're flying at about 210 knots in the pattern. It's great. It's, uh, it's really kind of neat. It's also really good in a crosswind. It handles well. It has plenty of rudder authority, and it does pretty good on slippery runways. The only disadvantage being the nose wheel is a little bit light, so you do need to push a little bit of forward pressure to get some nose wheel steering on uh, slippery runways. It can get down and slow down pretty well, much better than any of the Boeings I've flown. Uh, when you pull the power off, you can fly, in fact, at uh, 210, 220 knots, almost to the marker, and pull the power off, gear down, flaps out. Flaps you can bring out at a much higher speed than any Boeing I've flown. And that allows you to slow down really quickly, almost like a turboprop uh, airplane. That's huge. Makes it much uh, easier to fly and uh, work in with the traffic. The switches on the MD-80 are kind of interesting. Every single one of them, if you look at the overhead, appears different. The fuel boost pump switches are different from the windshield wiper switches. And the emergency power switch is this huge honking switch that uh, controls that. Um, the seatbelt sign switch is uh, just a, a different than, uh, say, uh, any of the electrical switches. It's nice that when you grab a switch, you know what it is instantly. The Boeing has some of the same switches for, for example, the seatbelt sign is the same as his windshield wiper switch, and uh, uh, all the uh, push button for window heat, things like that, they're all the same for electrical switches and stuff. So this has a little more unique character. It looks, when you look at it, it looks more like a hodgepodge and a mess, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Everything on the airplane is sturdy. It has a solid, in this, in this case, electromechanical feel, and it's very sturdy. There's plenty of leg room in the airplane. Uh, of course, you can adjust the rudder pedals like any jet, and but also, once you're, uh, uh, in cruise and you want to stretch your legs out, you can move your feet outboard of the rudder pedals and stretch out. And there's a good extra two feet past that. So there's nobody who wouldn't fit in an MD-80. And the same thing applies if you're really short. Of course, the seat can come very, very close. I would imagine if you're uh, less than five feet, you can still fly this airplane. <laughs> Did we? Yeah, just did somebody pull the plug or the plug <laughs> fell out. That brings me to the next topic. Probably the coolest thing about an MD-80, if you lose all the power, all the hydraulics, um, you could turn the battery switch off in this airplane and it'll still fly really well. Uh, you can, uh, you've got ma manual controls like you always have in normal flight, uh, with the exception of a boost for the rudder. Don't need it. Uh, electrically, you're uh, all set. You've got uh, things that will either operate on the battery, or else we have standby stuff that works on the battery. So. It's a safe airplane. That's probably reflected in its uh, accident rate. MD-80 ranks is one of the safest. Those are some of the quirky items. When I was on the 757, we had a little video. 32 dimmer switches to dim all the lights. Wouldn't you know it, get on this airplane, there's actually 40 different dimming switches. Leave it to the MD-80 to do something to beat the Boeing. That's it. I'm going to miss this airplane. I hope to come back soon. And, uh, fly it again, uh, but if you ever have the opportunity to fly an MD-80, give it a shot. It's fun. It's old school, it's durable, it's reliable, and it's a pretty good airplane.